You're listening to The Topcast, the original podcast for growth-minded instrumental music and voice teachers since 2015, with your host, Tim Topham. Our mission at Top Music is to empower instrumental music and voice teachers to find and nurture their innate creativity so that they can teach lessons that are innovative, integrated, and inspiring, and that will have a positive lifelong impact on their students. Join us each week as we interview teachers and creators from around the world and unpack fun and exciting ideas to maximize your teaching and studio business success. Hi teachers, welcome back to the Topcast, your weekly shot in the arm of music teaching inspiration, studio tactics and business strategies. Super cool to be back with you again. I hope you enjoyed our first episode back after the break last week. If you haven't checked that out, then uh, definitely go and have a listen. That was episode number 364 with our Top Music Sheets composer for May, Jared Abel. Have you ever had trouble finding a tuner or technician for your acoustic piano? Globally, piano tuners are becoming an endangered species and it's getting worse by the years as more and more tuners become older and fewer people join the profession. If it's not having an impact on you right now, then I expect it may in the coming years if we don't do anything about it. And it's certainly a big concern for the major concert halls around the world. And while I love them, digitals and hybrids might not solve all the problems. In today's episode, I'm going to be chatting with one of our members who has decided to take action on this challenge and wants to increase awareness of this global issue. All our links for today's episode will be over at our show notes at topmusic.co slash episode 365. My guest today, Nikita Wilson, is a piano teacher and electronics engineer from the northwest of England. Nikita teaches teens and adults in a creative way, exploring all genres of music. She loves seeing their progression, excitement, and their unique personalities develop through their playing. Welcome to the show, Nikita Wilson. It's great to meet you. And you, Tim. Thanks for inviting me. Now, you've been a member, of, a Top Music Pro member for about four years, and I love having our members on the show to talk about what they're up to. And you're based in the UK, I believe, and we can all hear. So tell us about your teaching and your studio, because I understand you actually do a couple of different things. I do. So I've got a quite a small studio, a mixture of ages from teens to the over 60s. I do quite a lot of creative things with them. So I start with chords, getting to know the piano, and then as the knowledge builds and we build a relationship, doing a variety of, you know, general genres of music and keeping it creative. I found that because I work with adults and teens, it's very student-led and you need to listen to what they want and like sort of tailor it to them. And I love it because I love seeing their progression, their excitement and, and their improvement. And I'm also an engineer, so that's something else I do. And so having the small studio and the engineering kind of works for me. And it's something I'd like to expand. So I would like to teach sort of half my time, as well as doing half my time doing the piano technician's work. Which is what we're going to be talking about in a moment. What's the engineering that you do? I'm an electronics engineer. Okay. So you are building or designing or designing, I guess, electronic componentry for some, well, what's it for? There's some bespoke devices and there's some maintenance as well. So the customer comes in, they ask for a product to be made. So we sort of work with them, design it, go through the whole process and go, this is what we've come up with. And they go, oh, great, make that for us. So we make it. and then. Obviously, on the back of that, there's all the maintenance and repair of it. So it depends really what the customer wants. Right. Yeah, I find I find engineering really interesting. My brother's an engineer, and I always thought that in another life, I could have done some kind of engineering. I, I find it fascinating, the building, designing, construction. I think it's, yeah, it's really interesting. So, Nikita, you contacted me as you wanted to spread the word about a crowdfunding campaign that you're running, and I was really happy to help spread the word about this one because I do believe this is a cause for well, music teachers, music lovers, all sorts of people around the world. So can you tell us what it's about? Yeah, I'd love to. So I'm crowdfunding to undertake some piano technicians training, and that's five intense weeks learning to tune, repair, maintain pianos, followed by a period of skills refinement underneath the guidance of a master craftsman at the Piano Academy. The crowdfunding money would mainly be to pay or contribute towards the training and the accommodation during that time. I'm going to need specialist tools. 
basically to get their experience and their knowledge into my head. I'm hoping to do this in sort of October, November time of this year. And then the skills refinement would be for, you know, months after that. And then for the rest of my life, obviously. So a lot of people are probably thinking, why am I doing this? Or why, or why should we help? Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. Why should we help? And the main thing for me is we've got a lack of piano technicians in my local area, in the UK, around the world as a whole. And it's one of the trades or, or arts, depending on how you see it, is, is on the red endangered list. So the closest technician to me is sort of over an hour away in car in the car, and we've got some pretty terrible roads. <laughs> and Whereabouts in the UK are you? I'm in Northern England. What what town area? In a place called Cumbria. So the Cumbria is the county. Right. Okay. So it's all the way. Yeah, literally. Yeah, you may as well be in Scotland. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, within like two hour radius, we've got about four technicians. All of them are over the age of 60. One of them is actually over 70 and just announced his retirement, which I think is some good going. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. <laughs> it is. So the, the skills are kind of dying out and we're getting this big skills gap. I mean, I've had trouble getting my pianos tuned. Other teachers in the area are having trouble getting their pianos tuned and that's impacting on the students and the general community. And we're finding that not having a piano technician which is readily accessible in the area is resulting in less people getting an interest in learning to play, which is something that we don't want. Another thing is that we've we've sort of had a really big drive here to make music accessible to everyone, so disadvantaged backgrounds, low-income backgrounds. And I think that's great because people are getting like free lessons or discounted lessons to enable them to access music. However, if there's no access to someone who can come and tune their pianos, repair their pianos, then they're getting kind of disincentivized or they're getting priced out because even though they're getting the help with the learning, they've got a really badly maintained instrument, which isn't really fair on them. Yeah, it's interesting doing, doing the research. I've known for a long time that this is a big thing and there was a big article in the Guardian paper, which is one of our big papers over here, that said... And I quote, only an estimated 250 tuners and 20 expert, 20 expert techni technicians are left in Australia, which is worrying musicians, orchestras and those about to retire. And it's not, as you mentioned, it's not just about there's not enough of these people, but the current ones are ageing. And so the other quote that I found was the Australasian Piano Tuners Guild reports that of their 250 members, 65% are over 50 years old. And there just isn't the number of people coming in. There just isn't the interest. And this is something that is a global phenomenon, clearly happening in, in your part of the world, my part of the world. And it's, it's making papers more generally, so outside of music teaching. And that, you know, that's a really big sign and a big worry, I think. Mm, that's why I was really happy to have this conversation as I know there'll be people listening who are like, yes, I know, yeah, this is an issue. There may even be teachers listening who are thinking, who have thought before, well, maybe I should try tuning. Maybe that's something that I could do on the side or as a, a change of my shift in my career. Uh, I, I just think it's a really interesting conversation to have. Now, before we go too far, you've mentioned tuners and technicians but there's also builders and restorers and things. So what's the difference between all these roles? Okay. So a piano tuner is, well, the tunes the piano. So every six months, someone comes to your house, they use a little tuning hammer and adjust the pins. So if you look inside your piano, you've got a pin board. They adjust those, which adjust the strings. And basically they make the piano sound nice. It's the <laughs> so they're not, they're not pulling it apart. They're not replacing hammers or anything like that. No. So they just tune in it. Your piano technician can tune your piano, but also they can replace a broken string or a squeaky pedal, and they provide services such as regulation, voicing, action, regulation. And so they can make the piano good for the performer as well as making it sound good. Right. Yeah. So as long as in as well as in tune sounding 
warm and lush and whatever those words we might use. And then you've got your engineers and your builders. So they build and design your piano. So every piano that's ever been designed has been done by a team of people, whether that's an acoustic piano or a digital piano. And several hundreds of hours have gone into that. So anyone who's played or owns a piano has experienced the work of the engineers and the builders. So although sort of going on about technicians' work, we have to do actually have to remember that without people wanting to do technicians' work leading into building and engineering, we're not going to have pianos. That's sort of stepping stone. And then we've got restorers as well. So is that more about the woodwork and cabinetry or the insides or everything? Oh, kind of everything. So restorers, if you got quite an old piano from 1800s or something, they can do all the historical research behind it and they can bring it back up to, you know, it's really good condition in how it's meant to look. But they can also do that on modern day pianos. They can completely restore a piano. That's not working. Right. And so the, the role that you're going for or the learning that you're trying to do is the technician role, right? Yeah, that's right. So apart from the obvious need for tuners to keep pianos maintained and in tune, why should this be of relevance to music teachers, particularly piano teachers who are listening? I think it's highly relevant. I mean, we've got to remember that not everyone wants to be a concert pianist or go on to play professionally or be in a band. And every single day we see people and we just accept that. And we teach them because... We enjoy teaching them. They enjoy learning. But there's this other aspect of the piano that we can open up to them, this whole new world of what's inside the piano. And someone might come for our studios who's never thought that tuning or technician's work or, or piano building was a career option. And I think as part of giving them sort of an, an integrated music education around the piano, we should be making them aware of this. You know, let's let's open up the piano. What's inside of it? If we play this note, what's happening? If we play it, you know, piano, what's what's happening with it? And that then enhances their knowledge, not only for, you know, careers, but in how they can play better, enhancing their technical ability. And it helps them make a, like a full musical use of all the keys, the hammers, the dampers. And develop this unity with the instrument that, you know, you've got guitar players and violin players. They really understand their instrument where, you know, the piano is just it sits there in the corner. You just walk up to it, you play it. And we could develop more of an understanding of it and feel more at one with it. And you never know. In the future, I know we're going to tuners, but in the future, you, you, you might have this self-tuning acoustic piano and the person to invent that might be sitting in one of our studios but they're never going to invent this if they just consider the piano this foreign object that sits in the corner and some some random person comes and tunes it every six months <laughs> i like it let's open this up to them yeah yeah it's a it's a great viewpoint to to take and and i encourage teachers if you're teaching on an acoustic instrument and you don't already do this, then open the instrument up, take all the books off the top. I remember my childhood teacher, you know, there was no way you could open any of her pianos because there was like a, a metre high pile of books on top of all of them. <laughs> but if, it, like, if you haven't already done it, open it up and take the front off the piano if it's an acoustic, have a look inside if it's a grand and make sure, make sure the students are, they should be doing this in the first lesson, I think. Make sure students are having a look inside and seeing it. It's, you know, it's quite a work of art and work of machinery as well. And the other great fun thing I love doing is, yeah, getting them to hold the sustain down. And if you're happy with them, touch, it, touch the strings. I don't know, that might be a bit like, well, no, you're not allowed to do that. Then they can make some pretty cool sounds or just singing into the strings with the sustain pedal down or shouting into it. You get this horror movie kind of sound, which kids love, like all of this stuff. We can have some simple fun with it. But as you say, you could go a step further and go, well, if the students aren't understanding what's actually going on inside, they may never even think about this as a possible career. So I think that's great. There's very few options. They're quite difficult to find and they're also quite expensive. So there are three kind of main ways. There's a, 
a musical instrument craft degree that's aimed mainly at building repair and restoration that there, there is tuning and technicians work involved in that because you, you can't build if you don't know this there's the piano technology school so that's aimed mainly at tuning and then there's the piano academy which is a piano technicians training theoretically there are apprenticeships but these are incredibly difficult to get i tried just couldn't get hold of one but there are the four kind of main options mm. so the the person you're planning to study with, isn't that an apprenticeship model or is that something, one of those other four? How have you gone about that, finding that person? So I went through lots of searching on Google and found the Piano Academy. And when I was speaking to him, I've got quite a lot of underlying knowledge from the engineering and from playing the piano. We had a chat and he said, yeah, you what do you want to do? I want to be a piano technician. I want to know what's inside it. I want to learn how to tune it. And he said, yeah, come and do the, the, the five weeks in tents and then do the sort of six months afterwards of skills refinement. So that's you learning, doing the skills. And then you can use this in your own studio and then um, more widely in the community, which will be great. And I, I did some looking as well when you mentioned this. So I found that there is one course in Melbourne, but it costs $27,000 and there's no government subsidies for it. So that's going to put it out of reach for a lot of people. It looks like there's maybe one in Sydney, kjpianos.com.au, but I wasn't sure exactly how that works. And then I found something about in 2002, the Australian Music Association, the Australasian Piano Tuners and Technicians Association, welcomes the news they had an announcement that the certificate for in piano technology has been approved but i then couldn't find out any more about whether any institutions are actually running that so it's like it's a it's a really tough one like we we it almost needs to be normalized that this is just some one of the many careers that you can go to in music but unfortunately it is it does seem quite difficult to find the right places the right people etc I was going to ask as well, you know, why do you think this isn't a more popular profession? Because, you know, the piano tuner comes around to my house and they're getting about $200 or something for an hour's work. Now they've got to travel. It's not too badly paid if you enjoy it too. No, that's a good question. Why isn't it more popular? I think although it's, it looks like they're getting paid good on top, they, they, are, they are getting paid. It's, it's a good job. You know, we, but you do have your travel, you've got your overheads, you've got, you know, all your strings and things that you need to buy. Although that's something you pass on to the customer. So, but it is a good question. And I think this lies in sort of education, awareness of, sort of the career pathways and the opportunities. So I don't think we're doing enough to promote piano tuning, technicians, builders as a career. We're just not making people aware of it. I mean, did you get told it was a career option, you know, from your teacher or school? Or... No, I think the first, the first time I ever realised you needed piano teacher, uh, tuners was, was when you own a piano or you buy a piano, buy your first piano. It's like, oh, no, we need to come and tune that in a month or whatever it is. It's like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the awareness is out there. We just don't think about it. No, you don't. I mean... That's something I didn't get told either. And, you know, just just because we're not, we've never told people in the past doesn't mean we shouldn't start telling people in the future. You know, let's promote it a bit more. And I think off the back of this, it would be really good to sort of develop some community partnerships you know, with local schools and community groups and deliver some sort of workshop. So like a tear down piano, Oh, I, I can see t teenagers loving, like, you know, just walking to school. We're going to tear down this piano stick. Oh, well, that's cool. And then you're looking inside of it. This is what, you know, the hammers do. This is what the keys do. I think they get so much learning from that. And, you know, it's, it's all about the music. And it's all about, there's a lot of engineering inside of it. And then it's promoting, you know, there is a career option here. If this is something you want to do, raise that awareness. And... That's the awareness side of it. But then there's also the opportunity side of it. So we've mentioned lack of courses and really you need some money to go into this. So there's just not enough courses available. 
and it's also quite a unique market. So we need to be, I'm not sure who, this is something I need to kind of figure out, which I'd love to do. Who do we get in touch with to go, let's create another course, let's make this more widely available to people. You know, an example from my area, just to go off on one, but we had a big problem with dry stone walling and there was no one dry stone walling. Wait, sorry, dry stone walling. Dry so that's stone the walling. old school method of building walls in England without mortar, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was completely dying out. There was lots of farmers having lots of problems and then nobody did anything about it. Then all of a sudden someone made a big fuss and promoted it and got the word out there. And now lots of colleges offer dry stone walling and that solved the problem. And I could kind of see if we could figure out a way to do that make for a fuss. tuning <laughs> yeah. and piano yeah. text. We can make that fuss and all of a sudden we might get more, which would be great. Yeah, I mean, that dry stone walling thing made me think on my TikTok sometimes, th- I don't know how this ends up on my TikTok, but thatched roof rest- restoration came up the other day and I was thinking thatched roofs. Now, you know, that's not a thing in Australia, obviously, but being an English background, I, I do, I have seen it a lot. There's a lot of old thatch roofs and those buildings are still going and they're going to be going for another thousand years. <laughs> Probably they'll still be going. Someone's got to know how to replace those roofs. But the interesting difference here is that no one's building, I don't think these days, a new house with a thatched roof. So that's, there's a limited number and eventually they'll decay and maybe that, there'll be a time when that won't be a thing. But pianos, there's like thousands of these instruments being built and sold every single year. I think Australia imports 5,000 or something acoustic pianos in the, most, in the, in the recent years. We're going, to, we're going to need people who can tune these things. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's really interesting. I wanted to ask as well, there's going to be people who are thinking, okay, well, Nikita, that's all well and good, but why don't we just buy digital pianos or hybrid pianos? They, they don't even need tuning. Inside a hybrid piano, you still have mechanical parts that you'd get in your you know, traditional acoustic piano. You've got, and they still need to be re- repaired and maintained. So every three to five years, an acoustic piano needs to have an action regulation. You know, if one of those breaks, someone needs to come along and repair that. And not only that, in sort of a hybrid piano, you've got all the digital parts. and digital breaks from my experience in the electronics world it's gonna break it just will and another thing is technology obsolescence that's a big thing so technology evolves it moves so quickly these days so if you've got chips in hybrid pianos and if one of them breaks if it's stopped being manufactured then the piano is never going to work again so that actually reduces the lifetime of your hybrid so you know, they do have unique selling points. They can do all these things that your, you know, acoustic piano can't do, and that's great. But I sort of see it as it, with the hybrids and with the digitals, we don't necessarily need the traditional tuning skills, but we're still going to need the technicians with the skills of doing harm repair, key replacement, action regulation, combined with, you know, the digital skills of programming, chip replacement, a bit of soldering. And I see that the role of the piano technician needs to just kind of adapt. It needs to evolve with the evolving technology that we've got. You know, this this has happened all the way through history, you know, from the harpsichord all the way to now. People have evolved with it. So the piano technician needs to evolve as well, you know. The hybrids and digitals don't remove the need for it. It just changes the skill set that's needed to maintain and repair them. So for the, I think you've made, a, you've made a good case for this. There's going to as well, I think, be people listing who will be thinking, well, you know, how's this going to solve the problem around the whole world? <laughs> and I, I thought about that and then I'm like, you know what? I give you credit for taking action and bringing this issue to light and reminding me as well of my role in trying to spread the word about this and seeing what we can all do to help. So 
good on you for going, I'm going to try and do something about this. The other thing that you mentioned to me is your desire long-term to share this with other people. So tell us about that. Yeah, so I'm going on this this training, but just because I'm going on it doesn't mean other people can't benefit from it. You know, I'd love to pass these skills on to somebody else in the future. Let's keep this sustainable. We're always going to have pianos. I hope we're always going to have pianos, you know? I, I so, can't see a concert hall with a digital in it for qu- quite a while yet. Me neither. So if we've always got them, we're always going to need people who can look after them and, and love them. And if I can pass those skills on to the next person, not only does it help the sustainability in the local community, it helps, you know, if they want to go on into, you know, tuning concert pianos, let them go and do that because we're going to need this forever. And, you know, I mentioned before about the engineers and the builders, you know, if someone sort of that I can give the information to, if free piano lessons go in, you know, like you say, open up the pianos, shout in it, you know, what's all this, what's this doing? What's that hammer doing? You know, they realize then, oh, this is, this is kind of cool. Let's go. I could build this. I can make something. We do have people in our studios that would really, really engage with the technical side of it. And I just love to pass that on to my students in the short term and see what happens, really. Encourage them to go out there. But yeah, long term, I'd, you know, I'd love to take on Apprentice because when I've been looking into the apprenticeship routes, I've, I've run lots and lots and lots of people and they're all sort of, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I can't do this now. Okay, why? I don't have the time. I'm too old. Sorry, I'm not taking anyone on. So <laughs> it sort of gets me that we've got this on the red endangered list, but you can't actually go down the apprentice route. And I want to try and open that up for people. So yeah, long term, let's pass it on. And we even talked about how you could uh, potentially create courses or information for music teachers once you know more about it, about ways that they could do this with their students, not tune the piano, but just other ways to engage with the instrument that could add interest uh, around this technical side of things. So Yeah, I give you full credit, Nikita, for giving this a shot and setting up the crowdfunding uh, campaign. We'll put a link in our show notes, which will be at topmusic.co slash episode 365. Now, you're a Top Music Pro member, so can members contact you through Top Music Pro? Yeah, of course they can. Just search my name, Nikita Wilson, and drop me a message and I'll get back to you. And for anyone that isn't a Top Music Pro member on the crowdfunding link, If you scroll down the bottom of the page, there's a contact button. Just press on that, leave me a message. Fantastic. And it's over at gofund.me. And as I say, we'll put the link in our show notes because it's got a whole lot of numbers and letters I'm not going to try and read out right now. (laughs) But Nikita, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Good luck in your mission to um, spread the word about piano tuning and technicians' roles. Thank you very much, Tim. It was great speaking to you. Well, make sure you check out today's links over at topmusic.co slash episode 365 if you'd like to find out more about some of those challenges, links to the articles that I found, and also if you'd like to check out Nikita's GoFundMe page. Over on the Piano Podcast this week, we've got episode number 16, Learning to Teach Beginners with Beck Stewart. Now, Rebecca Stewart is a phenomenal teacher. She's actually our head of certification and also our community manager here at Top Music Pro, so we love hanging out with Beck. And I know you will too. So make sure you go and tune into that episode. It's over at topmusic.co slash piano dash podcast or wherever you're listening to this show. Well, that's it from me this week. Next week on the show, Marie Lee is coming back. Marie's been a guest a few times on the podcast. If you haven't hung out with Marie, you're going to love hanging out with her next week. She is such a great teacher. She's from the States and she's all about group teaching. And that's in fact what we're going to be talking about, converting to group teaching. Now, if you've ever considered this, and probably had a million questions. How do you do it? When should you do it? What should you tell parents? How do you sell it? What's the technic- technical issues around it? What size group should you run? All of those kind of questions. They're the ones that we're going to be answering next week. We'll also be talking about her group Illuminated Conference and offering you a very special discount if you want to go along to that. 
I'm Tim Topham and you've been listening to the Topcast. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll speak to you next time. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research into music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today. If you enjoy this show and want to hear more of our work, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening today. For links and resources mentioned in this episode, visit us at topmusic.co slash podcast or check out the show notes. I'm Tim Topham. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week ahead and I'll catch you next time.